Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to this week's Student Athlete Playbook video segment with 100 Yards of Sports. Now today, I'm here with a very, very, very special lady. Now, before we get to her though, because she's going to do a lot of talking during this segment, because we're going to get into some very, very deep stuff. But if you're wondering who I am, this is your first time watching the video segment, I am Barry Brown, the author of the Student Athlete Playbook, the Amazon bestseller Student Athlete Playbook, Success in the Classroom, Sports and Life. And as you already know, for the people that are watching this segment for the eighth gazillion time, and we thank you for that, we focus on developing the whole student athlete. So academic compliance, character development, and athletic training. But a part of that, and which is why we have this very, very special guest here today, is what about the emotional side? It's a thing called EQ, emotional intelligence. So without further ado, let's hop right into this interview, this conversation to help the student athletes, the parents, the coaches, the teachers, all the youth service providers out there in the world. That's what we're here to do with the Student Athlete Playbook video segment with 100 Yards of Sports. Miss Tierica Berry, how you doing? I'm good, how are you, Pete? I'm doing wonderful, doing wonderful. Known this lady for a long time. Uh, we've done a lot of work around the country in a lot of schools with a lot of young people. So Tierica, tell the people, tell our viewers, what exactly do you do? So um, as you said, my name is Tierica Berry. I am the founder of uh, Woman Standard. And we are a uh, youth service organization where we utilize social emotional learning to um, help young ladies to overcome barriers and set and achieve higher standards, whether it's in education, whether it's in, in their personal lives or in any aspect of their lives. Wow. So you specialize mainly in young ladies. Yes. Excellent. And when we talk about these young ladies, like what kind of background, what kind of backgrounds have some of the young ladies come from that you work with? It's very diverse. The group, the groups of young ladies that I work with ranges um, anywhere from just working in traditional education settings, mm -hmm. working in um, after school programs. Okay. I'll even go into some juvenile detention centers. Mm -hmm. um, primarily working with middle and high school age students. Okay. But they have come from low socioeconomic backgrounds, from all kind of different walks of life. Because one of the things that uh, I think we we where we kind of miss the mark is we think that if if a young lady has or if youth or anyone is uh, disenfranchised in some kind of way, then they need more services than someone <laughs> that doesn't, that right. isn't. Right. But we all need the services. We all need the help. We all need the support. And so that's why I don't limit my services to one, partic one particular group of ladies. Right. It's everybody. It's for everybody. Excellent. That's, that's amazing. I was doing an interview um, at a radio station yesterday, and we were talking about at-risk kids and um, youth, and I said, I said, but the real, the re the reality is, all our children are at risk. <laughs> exactly. So, so that's why it's so exactly. important what you do. So I love, I love that, T. I Thank love you. that. So, hey, let's let's just jump right in it. Okay. The new book, the new project, the new presentation: Seven Secrets to Social Emotional Learning. Let me say that again: Seven Secrets to Social Emotional. Learning. What what is that, T? What what is that? Because some people are like, uh, Barry, Coach Brown, what <laughs> social emotional learn? What what is that? So let me first say how excited I am about doing this project, this mm -hmm. social emotional learning. I was actually challenged by uh, one of my mentors okay. to actually write this book. Mm -hmm. And for years, I was always considered the emotional child. Right. You know? Right. And right. so now, um, it's funny because now I actually mm -hmm. get paid and am able to go out and share my emotions and my expertise on emotions with the world. So that's it's right. really exciting. But that social emotional learning of the seven secrets to social emotional learning, it came about because I was actually traveling and doing this work with the educators around the country and when we start talking about social emotional learning people were thinking or or kind of making it to be this abstract thing and it 
got, I think it's got kind of intimidating for some people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think people began to overthink this social emotional learning aspect. So what I wanted to do is just break it down to some real basic fundamentals about SEL. So before you even get into all of the collegiate level, what are some of the basic yes. levels of social emotional learning and breaking that down so that we can go out and impact the young people that we serve? Listen, we're all about impacting, impacting, changing what we see with some of our youth. And let, before we continue, let me just make sure I say this to all our viewers out there, T, because a lot of people think it's doom and gloom for our young people. And, <clears throat> and we can tell you from the work that we do that there's another side to the doom and gloom side, which is the high achievement side, the very, I'm talking about bright light side with a lot of young people, which is the majority, by the way. We have more young people doing the right thing and working toward achieving their goals than we do the other side. And so we're here, to, we're here to help all sides continue to move forward in a proper way. Absolutely. So now, T, the first question I want to ask you, you said SEL, which means social emotional learning. Yes. What are some of the misconceptions about SEL? I think that one of the major misconceptions about SEL is that um, Social emotional learning is something that you do during social emotional learning time. You know, <laughs> yeah. okay, we have our 15 minute social emotional learning. Let's take out our social emotional learning curriculum and do our right. social emotional learning lesson. Right. But social emotional learning is something that is and should be implemented mm -hmm. in every interaction between a youth and adult or youth to youth or adult to adult, right. um, whether it's the teacher, whether it's the janitor, whether it's uh, the coach, whether it's the uh, person at church, whether it's <laughs> right. friend to friend, it doesn't matter who it is. We're always learning, even in our adult, in our adult phases. I learn every day on social emotional learning. I'm still learning, right. you know, so to think that it's just something that's confined to one little segment or something that we can do and check off in a box. That's one of the major misconceptions that I see about SEO. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> now, you know, I work, I work with young ladies, student athletes. I work with young men, student athletes. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to Toya White, our academic compliance specialist, and Coach Brian Spencer, our athletic trainer, and uh, Mr. Emery Williams, our business development now, what's the difference? Because, you know, when you're dealing with the young men, you know, we're, we're raised to be rough and tough and, you know, don't cry and, you know, man, just get up and shake it off and keep moving. Then on the other side, I have two daughters. You know my daughters. The girls is like, oh, it's okay to cry. <laughs> it's okay. We're gonna help you with everything. I don't even know if it's okay for girls to cry anymore. But you, you, you now you, you might know, be right. Societal norms, you know. So yeah, you see how old school <laughs> I am on that one. Uh, I went to straight the, the straight stereotype, right? Um, so what's the difference between young ladies and young men when it comes to social emotional learning (SEL)? What's what's some of the differences? So I'm glad you said stereotypes because that mm -hmm. word is huge when mm -hmm. you when you know answering this question because. Mm -hmm. There are set stereotypes that are associated with different cultures. Mm -hmm. There are different um, um, stereotypes that are associated with different generations. Yes. It's so many different things out there that are at play that if we're not conscious of it, then we'll miss the mark completely. Right. So keeping those in, in mind, we have to make sure that we're equipping these young people with the tools that they need uh, because what what a young lady might need at you know 13 years old is going to be different than what a young man is going to need at 13 years I old. I agree. So it's important that we don't just lump them all together and just try to give them some kind of catch-all social emotional learning process um, plan or program or anything because there are differences you know between I mean even even things that are going on with their bodies at that age right, you know right. they hormones, it's so many different right. things that are happening. 
So there are uh, very distinct differences without going too deep Dude, into right, it. Right. So I think that it is important at some at some case at some levels to uh, separate them and give them what they need at that point. Wow. But it's also important for them to come together to learn how to interact socially and emotionally with the opposite with each sex. Other. Right. Well. Now, so because I know um, my daughter, my daughter, my oldest daughter. She's going to an amazing middle school, uh, Ron Clark Academy. Shout out to Ron Clark yes. Academy. Um, <laughs> a tremendous blessing to be in that kind of atmosphere at that middle school age group. Because as we know, traveling the country and doing work in these schools, that, that, that is the toughest age group to work with <laughs> in a school setting. <laughs> um, specifically, I mean, just I know from my, my experience. <laughs> um, so I know... My daughter has 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 had great interactions with the opposite sex, um, and we've you know we've tried to navigate that to the best of our abilities. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to continue to pray on that, but everything's going well. Thanks be thanks be, and but I know some schools because some of the problems that they've had have gone to gender specific like learning learning like so. The, the ninth grade girls are separated from the ninth grade boys mm -hmm. and that. things of that nature. I've seen that. So I've seen whole schools set up like mm -hmm. this. So what are your thoughts on that? I think that it's, um, in some cases, you know, I've seen it work successfully. Mm -hmm. um, I do think that it's important that we give them an opportunity to interact with one another because if not, then, you know, what will happen is when they do come together, it's like, <laughs> right. Oh my God! Right, it's right. a boy. <laughs> right, right. Is that an alien? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So it's important to still show how to interact and have that, you know, um, that experience and mm -hmm. teaching how to respect one another, ah, chivalry, neat. you know, yes. things of those nature. Uh, those those things are extremely important as we're, you know, as they're matriculating through their their journey. So. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. I hope y'all learning. This is the Student Athlete Playbook video segment with 100 Yards of Sports. We are here with Miss Tierica Berry. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, T, okay, so we've talked about the misconceptions. We've talked about the differences between young men and young ladies when it comes to social emotional learning. How do we change the narrative around emotion? So example, like someone saying, man, Bear, you're you're acting too emotional. <laughs> How do we change that narrative with that? How I, do we do that? I hate and that's a strong word. I'm about to I say, use it. I strongly use it. That's dislike. A very, nope. Nope. Wow. I hate oh, wow. to hear people say too emotional or to call someone too emotional. Oh wow. And I feel so I'm so adamant about that because when it comes to your emotions, your emotions are real to you. Okay? True. And I always like to say, you know, like emotions or trauma, whatever, whatever it is, it's all in the, in the eye of the beholder. Correct. So Correct. however you perceive this experience that just happened, we can have the same experience happen right here in front of us. Mm -hmm. And you can be like, oh, man, that was, that was pretty funny. And I can be over here breaking down crying. Uh, true. Right? I have seen it. Yes. You feeling like this was funny. I can't tell you that's that's not real. You know, mm. that's not really funny. It was funny to you. Right. And just like you can't look at me and tell me that I'm too emotional because I'm seeing this experience through my lens, through my right. lenses, through my experiences. So whether it hits a trigger, whatever it is now, where where people make the mistake is to say, um, you know, you're too emotional. I can have whatever emotions mm -hmm. related to whatever experience I choose. Right. However, what you can help me to do is change my actions that I exhibit mm. as a result of these emotions. Wow. So I can be extremely sad mm -hmm. about a situation, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I have to just crawl under the table and stay there for the rest of my life. Or I can be angry to, to, no, to no end. I can be extremely angry about something that you did to me, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I have permission to hit you in the head. Ah, very right? true. Very you know? true. So, um, to not say, uh, I would challenge everyone to not say you're too emotional or judge the emotions mm -hmm. that a person is displaying as a result of whatever stimulus has, you know, you know, stimulated that emotion. 
but I would challenge you to more so focus on the behavior and different ways to express that emotion that you're feeling. So you're angry right now. How can we express this in a different way? Because this is not helping you get to your goals. Ah, yes. And it's actually moving you further away from your goals because if you do hit Barry in the head, <laughs> then you might go to jail, you That's know? Right. Or Barry might hit you back. That's right. Right? So, you know, helping them to see see the difference in uh, how they can express their emotions and not saying that a person is too emotional. It's, it's, it's very, what, what it leads to is emotional suppression, which is extremely dangerous. Because mm, you're going to have an explosion at some point in time. Right. And so if I feel like every time I cry, mm -hmm. someone's going to tell me I'm too emotional, then I won't cry. Right. And so even though something made me really sad, now I feel silly. Now I can't be authentic with my emotions. Wow, and that can turn into something else. That can turn into a lot of things. It and and it turns into it uh, manifesting your body as stress mm -hmm. because you can't get it out, and so you're suppressing it. You're suppressing it, and then you just explode. That's what I used to do when I was when I was in middle school. Wow, I would just. Tr tr it's okay. It's okay. Right. It's okay. And then somebody could do the slightest thing, and then boom, I'd explode. Oh, wow. And it was dangerous. That is very dangerous. Extremely dangerous. But we see it. We see it. We see it in all facets of life. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm watching some of these Little League football games, and you see some of these horrible things that are happening out there in Little League football, mm -hmm. Little League baseball, where these parents are fighting, and the kids are fighting, and... The referees are fighting. It's like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. Is it that serious? Mm -hmm. And it's all about being able to handle our emotions yep. and expressing it the proper way. Exactly. And then, and, and the action that comes with it, physically handling it the proper way. Right. Wow. Right. I got you. Social emotional learning. S E A O. We're here with Tierra Cabrera, the student athlete playbook video segment with 100 yards of sports. I am Barry Brown author of the student athlete playbook and participant operator and client of the student athlete achievement program youth sports and education now as we start finishing up the segment here can you share with our viewers a story that shows the importance of us as parents educators, grandmothers, aunts, uncles, aunties of instilling in our youth social emotional skills. Like, it, it, does it anything in your experience working with young people, do you have something to share with us about the importance of instilling in our youth social emotional skills? Because we have to have skills, not only to pay the bills, but just to live life. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, actually, yes, I do have a story. And I always like to share this story because it's, it's um, a story that's very personal, mm -hmm. but then also um, it hits on all the points. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's um, a friend of mine, Rashawn Miller. Mm -hmm. He's based out of Charlotte, okay. North Carolina. And um, Sean and I have known each other since we were teenagers. I oh, think wow. we met when we were like 15 or 16 years okay. old. Okay. So we we known each other forever. And um, so Sean was, but well, we always like kind of pace each other, you know, kind of, <laughs> you know, hold each other accountable, accountable. and oh, everything. That's excellent. Okay. And so, but Sean, when we were in, when we were in school, Sean was like, he he played all all sports so basketball mm -hmm. football track oh, I mean wow. excelled he was that dude yeah okay exactly. he was that man <laughs> man that's what we call him. he mm -hmm. had a, uh, maintained a four point GPA all through school oh, right wow that's and impressive so that says a lot because I I was not the strongest yeah, student yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so um, anyhow <laughs> yeah, yeah we're gonna move on from that <laughs> we're gonna move on from that <laughs> but um, he maintained a four point GPA mm -hmm. he graduated um, with honors I mean just like. He, he he did very well. And so, you know, mm -hmm. as a school system, as a principal, as a teacher, mm -hmm. you know, we can pat ourselves on the backs and say, oh, we graduated this young black male, 4.0 GPA, well-rounded because he's in sports and, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, good nice job. job. Yeah, good young man. Good job, mm -hmm. right? But when, um, when Sean went off to college, Sean actually had some, um, he had some, 
it was like a lot of confusion and things. And I, I didn't find this out until I actually helped Sean write his book. Wow. And I was actually reading through the main script of his book, and he talked about how he went off to college, and mm -hmm. and there was a lot of confusion around that, and how he started hearing voices, oh, and um, and his family actually had him, um, you know, took him to get an assessment. They had right. him committed, right. and uh, they diagnosed diagnosed him with bipolar disorder. It's serious. Diagnosed him with bipolar disorder. It's and serious. when they diagnosed him with that, he didn't know how to do that. I mean, he didn't know how to deal with that. Right. You know, because, you know, in our community, right. yeah, mental health is like a whole nother taboo. Ooh, yeah, we'll have to come you back know? and do another, that's a another whole segment on that. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 no question. <laughs> you know, yeah. but, um, but he didn't know how to handle that. He didn't mm. know how to deal with it, you know, mm. because he had, you know, been doing, you know, excelling in so many areas in his life. Right. And so he didn't really know how to deal with that. So he took in a, you know, Took an attempt on his life several times wow. and the last time he actually was sitting in his car he took the gun put it to his head and pulled the trigger mm -hmm. and the gun jammed and that's the only reason why he's here to actually mm. share that story and do the work that he's doing now so to me what that says is okay in school in traditional mm -hmm. education, what we're doing is focusing so hard on the IQ, the right. intelligence, you know, the IQ, right. the IQ, the IQ, at the expense of our emotional intelligence. So we have to do a balance because true success comes from um, from developing the IQ, which is the um, your mind, and your EQ, which is your heart, developing them together. And so um, because Sean was resilient, he was able to turn this situation around on his head Amen. but um, had that not been the case then the school system failed Sean wow. we failed him as a community we wow. failed him as a school system Wow. you know because we had opportunities to give him those skills that he needed so now he has a resilience so he's turned his situation around and he's Beautiful. doing work um, to change the narrative about mental health in the black community so he has a whole organization wow dedicated to that and helping young black males get more in touch with their emotions and yes. mental health and things of that nature. Wow. That's an amazing story. See, it hits on those points. It hits on all know? those points. It hits on the points. So that's wow. why that one is really impactful because it shows that, you know, you know, even though they're excelling in sports, mm -hmm. they're doing well in, in with their grades, they're, mm -hmm. you know, but how are their social interactions? Right. How are they dealing with emotions? Are they able to deal with disappointment? Are they able to deal with um, failure? Yes. Problem solving, critical yeah. thinking, all of these different different um, skills that you need. How do you process emotional trauma? Because everybody has something happen to them in their life that's emotionally traumatic. Right. But if I don't know how to deal with it, then I'll either suppress it or it will overcome me. No question. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And we're all about overcoming. We, we are the victors. Absolutely. We are the ones that achieve and move forward even through adversity, even through being knocked completely out, we can come back and triumph and move on to achieving greatness in our lives. This is the Student Athlete Playbook video segment with 100 Yards of Sports. This is why we do this video segment, to bring to you experts like Ms. Tierra Berry to share this important message about social emotional learning. EQ, IQ, it has to be a balance. The heart, the mind. It's very hard to be successful without having both. Absolutely. And we want our young people, we want our parents, we want our coaches, we want all our youth service providers, we want everyone to be healthy on the EQ side and the IQ side so that we can go live the lives that we are destined to live. Absolutely. So thank y'all for viewing today. We hope you've learned something. But before we go, Tierica, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you so they can be serviced with their social emotional learning. Okay, so um, my name is T. Erica Berry, and I'm T. Erica Berry across all platforms. It's mm -hmm. T-I-E-R-I-C-A. Berry, B-E-R-R-Y, like the fruit. <laughs> and um, Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. all platforms. 
Also, my website is awomansstandard.com, okay? Awomansstandard.com. And you can find all of my information uh, on, the, on that website, any materials. We have uh, the books on the website. So, Unpacking yeah. the Emotional Suitcase. Yes. Which is a yeah, classic. Man, that one right there is has changed and impacted so many people. Not even just young people. I've had adults come to me and tell me that that, that book actually walked them through the process of coping and processing emotional trauma. So that's Unpacking the Emotional Suitcase, Teach a Girl to Fish is on there. And soon, um, Seven Secrets to Social Emotional Learning will be available. I'm really excited about that yes, one. you should be. Really excited. So uh, <laughs> make sure that you stay tuned, stay connected, so that you can uh, be among the first to have your copy of that book, too. Outstanding. Thank you, Tierica. Thank you. And you have watched the Student Athlete Playbook video segment for 100 Yards of Sports. I am Barry Brown, author of the Student Athlete Playbook. And hey, go get Tierica's books. Go get your copy of the Student Athlete Playbook. And we'll see you next time with another exciting, important, informative student athlete playbook video segment with 100 Yards of Sports. <laughs>